The beginning of the 20th century was marked by an intensive industrialization period, both in Europe as well as in America. There was no let up in building plants, bridges, roads, and skyscrapers. Soon, questions on the quality of the construction and standard construction practices became a concern. One vulnerable part could become a cause of a major accident and serious casualties. In 1928, Russian scientist and professor Sokolov suggested the use of the ultrasound method to control the quality of construction projects. The method was simple in theory. A piezoelectric transducer converts electrical pulses to ultrasonic ones and transmits elastic vibrations into the object. The ultrasonic waves propagate into the material and reflect from the opposite back wall or from internal discontinuities. The reflected waves are received by the same or by another transducer and are displayed as an echogram. Interferences along the sonic path influence the results in the echogram. By analyzing the reflected waves, it is possible to estimate the condition of real objects. The ideas of the Soviet scientists were put into practice rather soon. Since the 1950s, ultrasonic testing has been used primarily to test steel structures. The situation with the key building material was trickier. Unlike steel, concrete is a very heterogeneous material, composed of cement, sand, multi-size aggregates, and water. When an ultrasonic wave propagates through this medium, the incident and reflected waves are weakened by the attenuation of the signal in the concrete matrix. Decades were spent to invent a simple and handy device capable of estimating quality of concrete constructions with ultrasound. Developers worked hard on both sides of the Atlantic, but even at the dawn of the third millennium, the world continued to witness numerous accidents related to deficiencies in the construction of reinforced concrete structures. A roof collapse at the Charles de Gaulle Airport Terminal in Paris. The TV tower collapse in Sestriere near Torino. The collapse of the interstate highway bridges in Minneapolis and Milwaukee. The partial ceiling collapse at the Big Dig Tunnel in Boston. The Expo Pavilion roof collapse in Katowice. The Transvaal Water Park roof collapse in Moscow. These are some of the most well-known tragic accidents of recent times. Government and building officials in many countries are requiring thorough inspections of reinforced concrete structures. Technically speaking, the goal has been to develop new tools to locate flaws in structural members. Acoustic Control Systems Limited, or ACCESS, a research and manufacturing company in Moscow, Russia, for more than 20 years, had successfully applied their know-how and test devices for inspecting metals and plastics. AXIS scientists began working on the development of an innovative device which would eventually bring non-destructive testing of concrete to a new level. However, there are inherent shortcomings in the ultrasound method itself. One of the main problems lies in the use of a coupling agent to mount the transmitting and receiving transducers. Besides, it turned out that some agents tend to corrupt the concrete. Another drawback in ultrasonic testing is the required access to both sides of the test object to perform a test. Perhaps the greatest shortcoming of the test method is the ambiguity of the test results to precisely determine the location and size of the internal flaws. Since the heterogeneous structure of concrete chaotically re-reflects and partly absorbs the signal, the echogram came out as indistinct and noisy. Only a very experienced specialist could decipher it. Still, the information value of the ultrasound technology was potentially very high. Many research laboratories refused to give up attempts to eliminate these shortcomings. In the 1980s, scientists at AXIS developed an ultrasonic transducer that did not require a coupling agent. By the end of the 90s, AXIS had developed one-sided test instruments 
to assess concrete and stone materials. These first prototypes needed serious improvements. Against a background of news about buildings and bridges collapsing all over the world, engineers at Axis put all efforts to solve the problem of ultrasonic testing of concrete into action. In 2008, Axis introduced the ultrasonic shear wave tomograph Mira. The name originates from Spanish mirar, to look, and an English word, mirror. Three innovative solutions were implemented in the Mira instrument. The dry point contact technology, the Ultramatrix multiple transducer focused antenna array, and the development of a digitally focused array software algorithm. The dry point contact ultrasonic transducers used in the Mira instrument are constructed with a proprietary crystal tip and a high performance composite damper housed in a very small casing. The actual contact surface area of the transducer's tip to the face of the test sample is so small that a coupling agent is no longer required. The use of multiple transmitting and receiving transducers electronically connected in a single array provided the much-needed ability to conduct one-sided tests. Experimental tests have shown a maximum depth of penetration of about 2 meters. The large area of the array provides a constant reception of the reflected waves. During the time of a double pass through the concrete structure, the ultrasonic wave partly scatters and gets absorbed. But the echo signal fixed not by one, but by 48 highly sensitive elements visibly stands out against the background of occasional re-reflections. The Mira instrument can be used as a one-sided test method to investigate problems in high-rise building facades, tunnels and underpasses, highway pavements, bridge decks, etc. Having resolved the problem of dry point contact and the problem of a contact agent required for testing, we have got a synergistic effect. The design philosophy of the antenna array granted one more important advantage. Since every transducer is equipped with an independent spring suspension, the ultramatrix array adapts to the relief of the object. You can work easily even on coarse plates with roughness up to one centimeter and the large area of the mirror array allows the collection of data from the whole tested zone promptly. The mirror instrument collects and processes data using a digitally focused array. The matrix antenna array of 48 elements literally stitches the object up at every measuring, transmitting 66 ultrasonic pulses into it. The elements of the array are controlled by a proprietary software that fires the incident waves in a sequential pattern. The sum of the total echoes or reflections is processed by the program almost instantaneously. A modified version of the well-known synthetic aperture focusing technique is used to construct in a few seconds after the trigger button is pressed a cross-sectional image of the area under the antenna array. The image is formed with more than 65,000 points by digitally focusing the ultrasonic pulse. The high resolution of the reconstructed images enables the mirror system to locate flaws as small as 10 millimeters in size. By reconstructing the information from numerous transducers of the antenna array, a comprehensible image can be produced. Furthermore, a 3D image of the internal structure can be made with the help of the specialized software. The test results are shown as a typical B scan, cross-sectional image of the area below the antenna along the plane parallel to the longitudinal axis of the antenna. The image can then be further post-processed and analyzed along any given plane using a personal computer. The image showing the internal characteristics of the test sample is visualized as a perspicuous color map. Every point in the zone of testing is depicted as a certain color scale, depending on the intensity of its reflection. Every reflector's position can be located with a high degree of accuracy. The tomogram shown was obtained from tests performed on fireproof plates of a glass melter. 
At a nominal depth of 130 millimeters from the surface, a cylindrical-shaped flaw, approximately 750 millimeters long, can be observed. The following tomogram shows a red zone corresponding to a voided steel duct in a concrete column. The test results were confirmed after performing an exploratory opening. The next tomogram shows Mira's test results from a reinforced concrete tunnel liner. In this case, construction specifications indicated the placement of a cementious material to fill the space between the concrete liner and the substrate. Three discernible voided zones are shown in this tomogram. At the center of the tunnel, the concrete liner is in good contact with the substrate. Along the edges, the yellow and red striped areas in the tomogram indicate potential voids behind the concrete liner. Displaying the test results as B-scan tomograms provides a simple way to understand the test results. But full appreciation for the MIRA equipment is evident when 3D models of the test results are generated. The new MIRA system is, uh, in my opinion, the most advanced ultrasonic uh, system for uh, inspecting concrete. First of all, it's an imaging system. You get an image of the interior of concrete uh, practically in real time after you do measurements. The axonometric image reconstruction makes it possible to readily discern internal flaws. It could be more evident only if the concrete would have been turned into glass. Numerous trials at independent scientific centers were an indispensable part of the MIRA development. One of these proving grounds was the Federal Institute for Materials Research and Testing in Berlin, Germany. A concrete block with embedded steel ducts was tested to determine the accuracy of the 3D image reconstruction software. The tests were performed by engineers and specialists experienced with ultrasonic testing and the MIRA system. A non-destructive testing engineer from Chicago, Mr. Aldo de la Haza, scanned the block's surface. He was followed by Dr. Herbert Wiggenhauser, an NDT specialist from Berlin. When all tomograms were collected, the MIRA system was connected to a laptop and the collected data was transferred. A proprietary software provided with the MIRA device processed the data and the 3D reconstruction of the test specimen was displayed on the computer screen. The virtual model strictly corresponds to the geometry of the real object. The new the second generation of the MIRA seems to be a very promising technology that is going to allow us to fairly quickly produce images of the concrete structures and internal flaws. Ultrasonic testing of a concrete wall panel was performed using the MIRA system to measure the thickness of the wall. At about three to four seconds after the system was triggered, the test results were displayed on the built-in screen. The bright red area in the tomogram corresponds to the signal reflected from the back wall. The thickness of the concrete wall panel is indicated by placing the cursor at the center line of the red spot and reading the corresponding depth on the metric scale on the left side of the tomogram. This is a very, very promising system for a number of uh, applications, starting from simple thickness measurements to measurements of, for example, tendon ducts. Even reinforcement can be inspected with that. The third sample tested was a reinforced concrete slab with reinforcing bars placed at various depths. The results of the MIRA testing show the location of the first set of bars at about 50 millimeters. In this tomogram, the bright red area at about the 200 millimeter mark corresponds to a reflection from the bottom surface of the slab. Above this reflection, three additional red spots are shown. These spots are reflections from bars located directly under the antenna array. The metric scale on the left side of the tomogram shows the location of the reinforcing bars at a depth of 50 millimeters from the surface. The next tomogram shows the location of the next set of bars at about 30 millimeters from the top of the slab. Physical measurement taken at the edge of the concrete sample confirmed these findings. Since 2009, the ultrasonic shear wave tomographic mirror system has been purchased by private companies and research institutes worldwide. 
increased number of transducers has led to uh, improved resolution of the images. The screen allows you to uh, look at your results while you're testing. People said it is a wonderful instrument and compared to other methods you can solve uh, many other diff difficult applications. The Mira system gained acceptance at a federal level in Russia in 2010 when it was used to test the bridge connecting Vladivostok and the Ruski Island. This is one of the most important bridges and carries national significance. Developers of the Mira ultrasonic tomograph system aspired to create a device that would raise the non-destructive testing of concrete to a much higher level. It looks like they succeeded. Mira is the only ultrasonic tomography system that doesn't require the use of a coupling agent. It's the only system that can measure the thickness of a reinforced concrete member up to two meters using a one-sided access. The software with the DFA algorithm provides high resolution and high speed of measurement. The operator can see in the built-in TFT display a comprehensible color scheme of the internal characteristics of the test sample. Thanks to the DFA, an accurate 3D model of the inspected area can be reconstructed. Experienced NDT specialists are already using the Mira system all over the world. English, French, German, Spanish, Turkish, Polish, Chinese and Japanese languages are available in the menu interface. The innovative ultrasonic tomograph is currently used during the reconstruction and inspection of dwelling houses and industrial buildings, bridges, tunnels, tanks, and other structures. The device is capable of finding voids, delaminations, and cracks in stone and concrete. It measures the thickness of concrete blocks, determines the location of reinforcing bars at various depths, voids in tendon ducts with pre-stressed strands or rods, it is a useful tool to estimate the quality of bonds and tunnel liners. The full capabilities of the Mira system are still to be explored, but the main goal has been achieved. Engineers of the 21st century, the century of grand buildings and innovations, now have a reliable and effective tool for non-destructive testing. <laughs>